And the whole church said, Good evening, everyone. I pray that today will be a glorious day in every life in Jesus' name. And the promises of God will be yes and amen in every life. Give me a good, good amen. Our Father, we thank you for this glorious day. What a special day. We thank you because of the Bible study. Thank you for our friends, our neighbors, our invitees who are coming for the first time. Thank you for those who just gave their lives to the Lord. And they are here today to study the word of God with us. Thank you for fathers and mothers, pastors and leaders, members, adults and children and youths who are here today to study the word. I pray, Lord, that everything we'll study will be beneficial to everyone in Jesus' name. Your word will not fall to the ground. It will do good in every heart. And Lord, we pray that all the promises and everything we're going to look at will be of tremendous profit to everyone. Turn every life around and give your people all the blessings they need that you'll be their sufficiency. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless everyone tonight. We're coming to John chapter 11. And tonight we're looking at verses 1 through to 16. Actually, as you look at this chapter, the old chapter itself is a unique chapter in the gospel according to St. John. It's a unique chapter in the whole of the New Testament. It's the record of the miracle of the raising of Lazarus out of the dead. It's a detailed account of the sickness and the death and the resurrection of Lazarus. The other gospels wrote about Christ raising the dead. But this one that we're reading in John chapter 11 is of a higher order. What does that mean? If you look at uh, the Jairus' uh, daughter that was uh, raised from the dead, she just died. And uh, she has not even been buried and not put in the coffin. It was a fresh scene. Actually, when the father came to Jesus and said, Come down, hear my child dies. It's at the point of death. And then it, she died. And then Jesus got there and raised him up. Raised her up. And then another event of raising the dead is uh, the son of a widow woman of name. But you see, in that case, he was dead. Put in the coffin, but not buried yet. And as the procession was going on, Jesus came there and touched the coffin. And that boy rose up. Like every dead thing in your body today will rise up. Yeah. But in the case of Lazarus that we're reading today, it's a very different. He had died already. He had been buried in the grave. He's been there for four days. And the body had actually been decomposing because... It's a, a master said he stinketh already. And he put his stone there so that they say the final has come, the final end had come. And now Jesus came there and he raised him from the dead. What power and what might. And we're told that that Jesus Christ is still the same, tell me, today, yesterday, and forevermore. And tonight, that Jesus will work mighty in your life. The question is, why this chapter? Why is it so peculiar that John will record about the raising of Lazarus from the dead with all the various details of this man? The reason is, actually you see, John was given the people of Israel and everybody that will read the sign that this is the Christ. This is the Messiah. And because he was doing that, he wanted to show them that nobody had ever done anything like this before in the history of the world. Check off from Genesis to Malachi and from Matthew to John, you'll find that this one is unique. This one is distinct. This one is special. 
It was to be the sign. And if the children of Israel were looking for a sign, here was a sign. Look at John chapter 2. In John chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Are you the Christ? Where is the sign? Are you the Messiah? Where is the sign? Are you the one that shall come? Where is the sign? What sign showeth unto us? Look at chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 48. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Jesus knew, except to see the sign, the credentials, the marks of the Redeemer of the Savior, of Christ, that nobody else can claim to have, except to see that special sign, you will not believe. Look at verse 49, the nobleman says unto him, Sir, come down before ere my child die. And Jesus said, your son lives, and that was it, life came. Life is coming to you tonight. Look at John chapter 6. John chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 30. In John chapter 6 verse 30, Then said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? You see again, over and over and over, they were asking for the sign. And eventually, you look at John chapter 20. In John chapter 20, reading from verse 30, look at what it says. And many other signs, you see that? John was concerned about the signs. He said, I've shown you a lot of signs, water turned into wine. I've shown you a lot of signs, Jesus walking on the water. I've showed you a lot of signs that he multiplied the bread and fed thousands of you. I've showed you the sign that this Jesus saw a man who had been paralyzed, impotent for 38 years. He raised him up. I've shown you the sign. There was a man that was born blind and Jesus gave me insight. I've shown you the sign that Lazarus was even dead for four days, stinking already, and Jesus raised him up. He said, I can give you many other signs, but this one, look at this, many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Oh, you see, they were lost, all those signs. No, you go to Matthew, you see the rest of them. You go to Mark, you see the rest of them. You go to John, you see the rest of them. He said, I selected these ones by the inspiration of the Spirit, and I'm reaching these one down. Why? Look at verse 31. But these are reaching that she might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. The reason you came to the Bible study tonight is that you will see what Christ has done, what Christ is doing, what Christ can do, and then you will have life. You will have light. You have happiness. You have health. You have salvation. And all the blessings of God will become yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. Can I tell you something? No one ever died in the presence of Christ. Think about that. As we look through the pages of the New Testament, they died before he got there. And when he got there, he drove away that spirit of death. But when it is in his presence, as you come to his presence, you will not die in his presence. Life will be strong. Life will be vibrant. Even in your life, in Jesus' name. Because no one ever died in the presence of Christ. They brought the sick to him and he healed them. And God was glorified as he healed the sick and he raised the dead. We're coming to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Look at verse 1. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, at the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. 
It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her ear, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister said unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. He whom thou lovest is sick. Look at verse 7. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. He'll get to you tonight. Yeah. And then in verse 11, these things saith he, and after that he says unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Look at verse 14. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. But that's not the end of Lazarus. He'll come back to life again. Yeah. And whatever has happened in your life, that's not the end of your life. You'll come back to life again, even from tonight in Jesus' name. In anticipation of what is still going to happen, we're looking at verses 1 to 16 today, but in anticipation of what will eventually happen, look at verse 43. Then, when, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, everybody, Lazarus, come forth. Did it happen? Yeah. Always it must happen. Yeah. And when he speaks your life tonight, always and to everyone, it will happen in Jesus' name. Yeah. And he that was dead came forth, bound hands and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus says unto them, Lose him and let him go. Tonight, lose him and let him go. Whatever binds you, everything will be cut off. Yeah. All those chains will be shattered. Yeah. And the yoke of the devil will be broken from your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're looking at uh, this uh, study tonight and the topic is man's sickness eventually resulted in God's glory. Man's sickness eventually resulted in God's glory. What do we title it like that? Verse 4. John 11 verse 4. When Jesus had that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. That problem in your life, that situation in your life, is not your final end. Yeah. God will be glorified in your life. Yeah. Christ will be glorified in your life. Yeah. And His promises will be fulfilled in your life. Yeah. Tonight, man's sickness that eventually resulted in God's glory. Three things we're looking at before we pray. Number one, the sickness of Christ's favored friend. Lazarus, our friend, is dead. The sickness that came on that friend of Christ. The sickness of Christ's favored friend. Number two, the solution for Christ's faithful followers. We know that was a follower of Christ, a friend of Christ, a believer in Christ, with Mary and Martha. And eventually, solution came. Solution has come. Yeah. The solution for Christ's faithful followers. Point number three, the security of Christ's fruitful flock. The security of Christ's fruitful flock. Number one. What's your number one there? The sickness of Christ, favored friend. Look at chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 1. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha, 
Bethany was about 15 furlongs, about 2 miles from Jerusalem. It wasn't far at all to Jerusalem. And we're told it was this Mary in verse 2 that anointed Jesus the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her ear, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Look at verse 3. Therefore his sister said unto him, they had a problem, and they knew that if they sent to Jesus, that Jesus will solve their problem. You must always understand that. You have any problem, whatever the nature of the problem, if you say to Jesus, the answer will come. Amen. Saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. They said, this is your friend. You love him, and you love him with everlasting love. And you love him because he has received you as his personal Lord and Savior. And now he is sick. When Jesus had that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Thank God he loves me too. I say, thank God he loves me too. His love will never fail in your life. Yeah. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, look at this, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. You know, somebody was sick. If he heard that his friend was sick, the person whom he loved was very sick. He would leave everything he was doing. He will rush there. He that believeth will not make haste. He knew that any time he got there, he knew he was going to perform a miracle. And he knows any time he gets to you, he's going to drop a miracle in your life. And therefore, there's nothing to worry about. You see it coming now. You see it coming in two days. Don't worry about that. When it comes, something good will happen to your life. But you look at this, Christ's friend, his favored friend, and yet it says he was sick. And who are the friends of Jesus really? Was it only Lazarus that was a friend to Jesus? Look at John chapter 15 verse 9. John chapter 15 verse 9. It says, as the Father has loved me, even so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Not only Lazarus, all his disciples. All those who believed in him. All those who followed him. He says, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments, and abide in his love. He says, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. And then he goes on in verse 13, greater love as no man than this, that a man should give, should lay down his life, for, for who? His friends. Singular or plural? Plural. Not only Lazarus. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have taken him as your Lord and Savior, you are his friend to you. It says, ye are my friends in verse 14, if you do whatsoever, I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, but for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I call you friends for all things that have heard of my Father that I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Amen. Amen. And ordained you that ye should go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever, somebody shout whatsoever. Amen. Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. And that shows that he wasn't only the friend of Christ. All those who have believed that have accepted his law for them. All those who have accepted his atonement for them on the cross of Calvary. And now they are following his word. They are following his way. They are following his will. Those are the friends of Christ. But then the friends of Christ, they become sick. They become burdened. They have problems. And they have some things bothering their hearts. Why? Let's come back to chapter 11, verse 4. When Jesus had that, he says, This sickness is not unto death. You're a friend of God. You're a follower of Christ. 
and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, anything that happens to you, never, never say, ah, the end has come. The end has come. Your end has not come. Yeah. Everything he appointed for you to do in life, you're still going to do in Jesus' name. Yeah. Sickness notwithstanding, persecution notwithstanding, problems notwithstanding, whatever it is, this problem is not your final end. Yeah. Then it says, for the glory of God, God, it is for the glory of God, the Son of God, that he might be glorified thereby. And let's look at uh, chapter 12. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2, you understand? After you raised him from the dead, that's the glory. The sickness is not the glory. The problem is not the glory. The healing of the sickness, the solution of the problem, the raising him from the dead, and the many people seeing that and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, that's what brought the glory. Chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Then Jesus, uh, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus, which had been which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, it says, There they made him a supper, and Martha served. Then you say, But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him, bright, healthy, and strong. All those appearances of sickness and death, everything vanished away. That's the glory. That's the glory. You know some people, they say, if I'm sick and I'm lying down there, and then I'm oppressed, I'm so sorrowful, I'm about dying, I will be patient because my patience in the problem will bring glory to God. I don't understand that one. It's the healing that will bring glory to God. It's the rising up that will bring glory to God. It's the transformation and the change in your situation that will bring glory to God. And if you're going through any problem today, when the Lord turns that problem around, and then you come out of problem, you come out of confusion, and you come out of that oppression of the devil, and you begin to give testimony, and we clap our hands and we rejoice with you. That's the glory. That's the glory. It is the healing. It is the raising from the dead. It is the power of God coming upon your life that's what brings the glory and thank god is going to happen yeah. uh, look at this uh, look at this now we're looking at uh, second kings second kings chapter 20 second kings chapter 20 and we're reading from verse 6 uh, from verse 1 to verse 6 second kings chapter 20 verses 1 to 6 in those days was ezekiah seek unto death and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. For some people, they will say that the end has come. But Hezekiah said, My end has not come. I said, Hezekiah said, My, head, my end has not come. Whatever happens, whatever prophecy you have, whatever dream you have, whatever revelation anybody gives to you, you are the one to look at the word of God, whether if you accept your end has come, well, sorry, but I'll see you in heaven later. But I'm still going to walk now, even after you have gone, if you accept that, but if you say, uh-uh, I'm not dying yet. I said, I'm not dying yet. The glory of God will come into your life. Yeah. Your end has not come. Yeah. Look at verse 2. Then he turned his face to the wall and he prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and has done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiel wept so. And it came to pass, a four, that is before Isaiah, was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, God is going to give me a word for you tonight. Yeah. And what I say according to that word that he gives me, like he gave Isaiah a word for Ezekiah, that word was fulfilled. Whatever word he gives me to give you tonight, it will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 5. Turn again and tell Ezekiel, the captain of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. He has said your prayer. 
I have seen thy tears. He has seen your tears. Behold, I will heal thee. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days, how many years? Fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servants David's sake. What he said he will do, he will do. You see, when something has happened like that, and then you feel, why has this happened? Why has this happened? Remember, the glory of God will be the final end. We're coming to, we're coming to uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 36. Acts, chapter 9, we're looking at verse 36. We're going to see something similar here now. There was a Joppa, a certain disciple named Tabitha. This is a woman, this is a lady, this is a sister in Christ, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and arms deeds, which he did, and then, which she did. Look at verse 37, and it came to pass in those days that, tell me, she was sick. A good sister, a good mother in the Lord, a good person, a good counselor, helping other people, following up other people, but it came to pass, she was sick, and she died. When they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber, and for as much as Leda was nigh to Joppa, the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Why did he do that? After all, she's dead. After all, they washed her and they were preparing her for burial. All of a sudden, somebody said, the apostle Peter is around. The one whose shadow is healing the sick is around. The one that says silver and gold are by none in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk is around. All of a sudden, they changed their mind. They said, call for Peter. Looks like the end has not come. I said, looks like the end has not come. He says, since Peter is around, since the name of Jesus is around, since the power of Christ is around, it looks like the end does not come for Dockers, and the end does not come for you. Yeah. What's your name? Yeah. I said, the end does not come for you. Yeah. A new beginning in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look at verse 39. Then Peter arose and went to them. Peter didn't say, what did you tell me about Dockers? She was sick. What happened? She died. Why are you calling me then? The end has come, but Peter knew what I know tonight. Amen. That the end has not come. Amen. What are you there? I said your end has not come. Amen. I said your end has not come. Amen. Something good is going to happen to you. Amen. Then Peter rose and went with them. And when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and the garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth. He said, those crying people, they were crying as if the end has come. I don't want to see any crying uh, face uh, here. Go out. Let the people that believe in the Lord that stand solidly on the promises of God, let them stay in. Are you staying you believe the promises of God? Yeah. No tears? Yeah. No crying? Yeah. No anxiety? Yeah. Look at this. And kneeled down and prayed and turned into the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Yeah. The end has not come. Yeah. You see, the Lord did not make Lazarus sick. You know, there are people, they read this uh, scripture, and then it says Lazarus was sick, and he told Jesus, and Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. They say, oh, wait. They say, you know what happened? They said, Jesus made his friend sick. 
so that he will heal his friends and then uh, there will be testimony and people will glorify him. Think about what you are saying. Look at your father. If a father deliberately makes his son sick, poisoned the son, and then runs around and took him to the hospital, so son, people will say he's a caring father. And then people got to know that he was the one that made the son sick. They look at him as a criminal, as a, as a devilish person. Look at a mother, a mother caring for a daughter. And then people got to know that she was the person that poisoned the daughter. And now to have a good name so people can praise her, she's running around to take care of the daughter. They'll count her to be a terrible woman. Or maybe a friend, a friend got if another friend into trouble and he got him into deep deep trouble and then after that now to show that he's a good person he's running around to take care of that friend they'll know that he's a depraved deceiver christ does not make anybody sick you are not sure of that one i said christ does not make anybody sick it is satan that makes people sick sin that makes people sick or self, if you don't take care of yourself and then you are careless about your health and you see that, uh, you know, something bad is uh, there, the food is bad and you're always eating the rotting food, it's the self. It's either Satan or sin or self. Look at Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing how many people? All. All that were oppressed by Jesus, oppressed by God, oppressed by, by the devil, for God was with him. Now, let's come back before I leave that point one. Let's come back to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. And I'm looking at verse 6. Look at verse 6 here. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, that is Lazarus, his friend was sick, he abode two days till uh, still in that same place where he was. You see, I can't understand that one. How is it that Jesus and that Lazarus, his friend, was sick and then uh, he stayed there. He didn't leave everything he was doing uh, and run there immediately. Let me show you the explanation in uh, Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18. Very important verse of scripture. Open your Bible. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18 are you there look at this and therefore will the Lord wait shout out the word wait the Lord therefore will the Lord wait why that he may be gracious unto you delay doesn't mean denial that the thing did not come at five o'clock does not mean it will never come. It's coming. And God will never be late. I say God will never be late. You're looking for a job, it's coming. Healing, it's coming. Deliverance, it's coming. Blessings of the Lord, it's coming. That he didn't come at this particular time. This particular time, it is so that you can have something better you will never forget. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon, upon who? Upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment, that's justice, righteousness. And blessed are all they that wait for him. You see that? He is waiting so that he will give you the very best. And you must be waiting so you can have the very best. Thank God I'm going to have the best. Thank God tonight you are going to have the best in Jesus. Point number two now. Point number two. I'm asking a question. What could Martha have done? You see, many people read this story. And they just thought, okay, this is what had happened. And Mary and Martha say to Jesus Christ, and they were waiting. And in the meantime, they did nothing. 
What could they have done? The solution for Christ's faithful followers. As we read the stories in the Bible, we must understand when the, other, when the people make mistakes, let's know that this is a mistake they have made. When the people did what they should not have done, let's know that this is what they should have done that they didn't do. Uh, what could Martha have done? What could Mary have done? How close was the solution to them while they were still waiting the solution for Christ's faithful followers? Christ's faithful followers have ready solution. I have a solution tonight. You have that solution tonight. Various solutions were available for Lazarus and for Mary and for Martha, which they forgot and which they overlooked. Number one, Mary and Martha could have said, speak the word only and my brother will be healed. That's what the centurion said. He said, we're not, we're not waiting for you to come. We're not waiting for you that must come to Bethany. And the centurion said, you can speak the word right there. The person they said to Jesus Christ, they could have told uh, Jesus, speak the word only and Lazarus from that distance would have been healed. Number two. The two of them could have agreed together in faith. Because you remember, Jesus had visited them. And Jesus taught them. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are combat and much busy over many things. But one thing is needful, which Mary has chosen because she was listening to the word of God. Mary, what did you hear when Jesus was teaching you? What came into your subconscious? What came into your mind? Look at Matthew chapter 18, and I'm reading from verse 18. Mary, did you hear this one? When Jesus was teaching, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, Very late, very late, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Amen. And whatsoever shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Look at this, look at this. And again I say unto you, Martha and Mary, I say unto you, Mary and Martha, that if two of you, Mary and Martha, shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Not something they could have done. Number one, they could have said to Jesus Christ, Lazarus, your friend is sick. When you are, speak the word only, a brother will be healed. Or they could have agreed together in faith. Well, something happened, number three. Some time ago, it was near Bethany. And Bethany is the place where the uh, Mary and Martha and uh, these uh, three uh, relatives, where they were living. And this thing happened in Bethany. Look at this, Mark chapter 11. In Mark chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 12. Mark chapter 11, reading from verse 12. It says in verse 12, and on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Look at verse 14. Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee thereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Look at verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree, what happened? Dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, says unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou causest is withered away. And look at the lesson here, look at the experience here. And Jesus answering says unto them, have faith in God. Verily, for verily I say unto you, that, tell me, Whosoever, Martha, whosoever, Mary, whosoever, Lazarus, whosoever. You see, they were waiting for Jesus. There's something they could have done. There's, some, there's a prayer they could have prayed. There's authority they could have manifested while they were waiting and waiting and waiting. Because it says, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. 
he shall have Lazarus, he shall have Mary, she shall have Martha, she shall have whatsoever he saith, and whatever you say tonight you will have. Yeah. So we don't have to wait and wait and wait. The solution is there by your side. Look at verse 24, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Thank God you'll have them. Yeah. You see, they didn't do what they could have done. The solution was so near. Lazarus, are you a friend of Jesus? Yes, I am. And are you sick? Yes, I am sick. As a friend of Jesus, what's your right? Look at this. We're looking at uh, Matthew, uh, John chapter John chapter 16 John chapter 15 in John chapter 15 Lazarus you tell me you are a friend of Jesus look at the legacy look at the promise look at the inheritance look at the privilege that Jesus Christ has given to his friend John chapter 15 verse 15 henceforth I call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what is not doeth but I call you friends. Thank God he calls me friend. I said he calls me friend. Are you a friend of Jesus? A follower of Jesus? A believer in Jesus? Look at your right. Look at your privilege. It says, I call you friends. For all things that I've heard of my father have I made known to you. Verse 16, ye have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And that, if you're a friend, and that this is your privilege, and that this is your right, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. You're a friend of Jesus, this is your right. Whatsoever you ask, he will give unto you. You see, the three of them together, the three of them together, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, what could they have done? They could have agreed together. Not only that, they could have used the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is as mighty as Jesus himself. Everything you have in Christ, you have in his name. Every power, every authority, every anointing, every breaking of the yoke, you have in Jesus, you have in the name. And the three of them, while this man was sick, they could have said, what does the Bible say? We're three. And here where it's like, you know, our heart is broken. And then we're crying. Our brother is sick. Wake up. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. Lazarus is one. Sickness is prevailing upon him. And the two people that are not sick, their face should be vibrant. Mary and Martha, they should prevail against that sickness. Look at the latter part of verse 12. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. But they were broken in heart. Their heart was broken. The wheel was broken. And everything, they had, their backbone was broken. And their confession was broken, but a threefold cord is not quickly broken. They should have stood, Mary, all that you have been learning at the feet of Jesus all these days. It is when the problem comes, everything you've learned at the Bible study, everything you have been hearing, that's the thing to bring out that thing, the sword of the Spirit, and the kind of cut off that thing from Lazarus' life, and you cut it off from the life of your son. Bad luck, you're caught from the life of your daughter. Any story you hear, you say, This is a plant. My heavenly father has not planted. I'm not, you know, just sitting there. If I were living in the time of Jesus, if Jesus were to be here physically, if I can see an angel now, if somebody will come to me now, you have greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Command that thing, that thing will vanish away in Jesus' name. And so they could have used the name of Jesus. Let me show you something. We're looking at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 49. Luke chapter 9, verse 40. Chapter 9, verse 49. I'm waiting for you to open the Bible. Luke 
chapter 9 verse uh, tell me verse 49 john answered and said master we saw one casting out devils in thy name and we forbade him because he followeth not with us there was even somebody who was not one of the twelve somebody who was not one of the seventy somebody who was not as close to jesus as mary Martha and uh, lazarus and that fellow he had had just one message about the name of jesus and he went about he cast out devils in the name of jesus if somebody who is not as close to Jesus will go about and cast out devils in his name. How about Lazarus? How about Mary? How about Martha? Wake up to your responsibility. You will cast out devils. These signs shall follow them that believe. Are there believers in the house tonight? These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They'll take up serpents and throw the serpents away. And they will lay their hands on the sick. Where are those anointed hands? You lay them on the sick. You lay them on the sick. You lay them on the sick. And they shall recover in Jesus' name. Uh, look at chapter 10, look at chapter 10, uh, chapter 10 of Luke, and I'm reading from verse 17. Something they could have done, something they could have done. It tells us in chapter 10, verse 17, and it says, And the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Look at everybody taking their opportunity and taking their privilege and holding on to their right. And the 17, the 12, and this other one that is not even part of the company and Lazarus just stayed there and uh, waiting you know, until Christ will enter Bethany and he has given you his name that name will work mightily in your life in Jesus name and now Lazarus could just simply have asked and believed and not look at the sickness and just look at the promise of God because look at what Jesus said Matthew uh, Mark chapter 9 Mark chapter 9 Reading from verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. And Jesus saith unto him, uh, hold on here, unto him here, this him uh, was not a friend, uh, a close friend of Jesus, a familiar friend of Jesus. It was a man that had a son having the spirit of epilepsy and was meeting Jesus for the first time and had gone to the nine disciples because Jesus went to the Mount of Transfiguration and they could not do anything and the man was so despondent and in despair and dejected and he said Jesus I brought my son to thy disciples he didn't know Jesus like Lazarus knew Jesus he didn't know Jesus like Mary and Martha knew Jesus but this man said if you can do anything help us and look at what Jesus said in that verse 23 Jesus said unto him and Jesus is said to somebody there tonight I said, Jesus is saying something to you tonight. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Lazarus, are you a friend of Christ? If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Mary, are you a friend of Christ? Martha, are you a friend of Christ? If you can believe, there are three of you there, and you can hold on to those promises of God, and all things will be possible in Jesus' name. You know what they could have done? You know what they could have done? Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They could simply have kept a positive confession of healing. A positive confession of health. A positive confession of life. After you have mentioned the name of Jesus, then switch over. Don't talk about sickness. Don't talk about problem. Don't talk about mountain. Just hold a positive confession. If they had done that... What happened will not have happened. And thank God, now you know what to do. I said you know what to do. You're, you're answering as if, no, I don't know what to do. Thank God I know what to do. Look at Psalm 118, verse 17. Psalm 118, we're looking at verse 17. 118, we're looking at verse 17. It says, I shall not die. I said, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. That's what, that's what Lazarus could have been saying. All the time they were saying, Jesus, we are waiting for you. And then he was feeling the pain. He should have been confessing and confessing and confessing. I shall not die, but live. 
I said, I shall not die but live. I said, I shall not die but live. You go for medical tests and they say this, this and this. You say, I shall not die but live. You're sleeping in the night. Just look at everything is dark and you're dizzy. You don't know will I wake up or not. I shall not die but live. And it appears that you know something is walking about here. Something walking about there. And they say they killed someone. So killed someone. So that's how Lazarus died. You say me. I'm not going to be Lazarus. Because I shall not die but live to declare the works of God. Look at what that will do for you. We're looking at, uh, we're looking at uh, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And the people who say, I'm dying, I'm dying. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The people who say, I've checked off our family history. It happened to my mother up to my grandparents, up to this and that. Remember, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereby. If you say, I shall not die, you will not die. Whatever is happening, whatever is running around, whatever is you know happening behind the curtain, or whatever it is anyway, thank God, next time I come here, I will see you. You will still be alive. You'll be healthy and you'll be strong in Jesus' name. Because I shall not die, but live. Now, what should Mary, Martha, and uh, Lazarus, what should they be looking at? Anytime you get into a problem, there's something you are going to look at. There's something you are going to look at. What are you looking at? Look at Exodus. Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. And I'm reading from verse 25. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. If you look at this, it will set you free. If you hold on to this, it will set you free. If you stand on the promises of God, and you're not standing on the premises of your problem, I stand on the promise that cannot fail. This is what is going to work for you. Uh, the Exodus chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 25. Look at this, and ye shall serve the Lord your God. Somebody there, and ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Yeah. There shall nothing cast their young, yeah. nor be barren in the land. Yeah. The number of thy days, the number of thy days, the number of my days, it will fulfill. Well, we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 15. It says, And the Lord will take away from thee. From who? From thee all sickness. And will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knewest upon thee. But he will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Somebody did not say amen there. Yeah. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 17, Jeremiah chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 14, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14, here is what you look at, anytime there's any challenge, anytime there's any problem, uh, don't just say, here we are in Bethany, and Jesus is there in Jerusalem, and we're sent for him, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, while you are waiting, look at the promises, while you are waiting, stand on the promises, while you are waiting, understand, that your, your positive confession will pull you through. Look at this, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Yeah. Will you die? No. Will they bury you? No. Will your body decompose? No. Not yet. Yeah. I said not yet. Yeah. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. You see that salvation there, healing there at the same time. We're looking at Matthew, Matthew chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, we're reading from verse 16. It tells us in verse 16 of Matthew chapter 8, it says, When the evening was come, like this evening, I said, like this evening, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with 
his word and healed all that was sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and he bear our sicknesses he will take them away he'll bear them away he will carry them away look at mark mark chapter 16 and i'm reading from verse 17 mark chapter 16 we're looking at verse 17 and this sign shall follow them that believe any believer there this sign will follow you as i go home the sign will follow you go to your business the signs will follow you as you are doing the follow of the people that have just come to the Lord, and there you are visiting their houses, and as you go there, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will take in devils. They will swallow devils. What do they do? Cast them out. I said, cast them out. Don't just say amen. Say it for yourself. I cast them out. You cast them out in Jesus' name. It is not the tone of your voice. It's the name of Jesus. It's not how short you are. It's the name of Jesus. It's not whether you are a man or you are a woman. It's the name of Jesus. And it is not whether you are young or you are old. It's the name of Jesus. And if you go confidently anywhere you see the devil playing any trick, and you say, devil, in the name of Jesus, come out. What will happen? You will cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take off serpents. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. And it says, and they shall lay their hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Nobody will die under your hand. You lay hands on your daughter, she will recover. On your son, he will recover. Yeah. On your wife, she will recover. Yeah. On your husband, he will recover. Yeah. And then as you go out and you're doing the follow-up, and you meet anybody that is sick, you say, thank God, I've been looking for a chance to put that thing to test. I've been waiting. And I've been, you know, they taught us, but I've been waiting. I didn't see anybody, but, but now I see somebody. Thank God, this one is going to have a testimony. Yeah. Thank God. Glory will come to God as the result of this tonight. Now, after the study, you'll be looking for people who are sick. You'll be looking for people who have any problem with the devil, and you know that power is in you already. Yeah. You'll cast them out. Yeah. I said you'll cast them out. Yeah. They will recover in Jesus' name. You know, that's just laying hands on the sick. I'm coming now. I'm coming now to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 15. Look at this. It's so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets. And they laid them on, on beds and couches that had the least. Look at this. The shadow of Peter. <laughs> even without even talking the shadow of Peter something new is about to begin to happen the shadow of Peter passing by overshadowed some of them and there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed and they were healed and they were healed everyone uh, look at uh, look at um, uh, acts of the apostles chapter 16 uh, acts chapter 16 this one now you see many people they're waiting until they say I, I hope i i know what to do if i knew what to do i can tell you know what to do the name of jesus is in your mouth speak it out and the confidence the one the greater one is living within you put him forth and the word of god the promise of god is yes and amen in your mouth open your mouth and declare the promise of god lazarus will not have to die we will not have to bury lazarus he will not be stinking in the grave while he's sick before he gets to that situation run there run there run there and go there with the name of jesus something good will happen to lazarus in jesus name now are you listening 
Look at Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, uh, we're looking at uh, verse uh, 25. Uh, it says, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang uh, praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Paul and Silas preached and sang praises unto God. Look up here. Many people don't understand. Let's say, for example, you see somebody that, uh, you know, is sick. And, uh, you know, two of you, Paul and Silas. Paul, where is he? Silas, where is he there? And the two of you, you get there. Mary and Martha. And they got there. And then after they prayed, Jesus will thank you because your name will work wonders. We know that what you all think are possible. And after they have said, in Jesus' name we pray. And they don't see anything happening. Then they take the gospel hymns and songs and they begin to sing GHS number 19. Christ Jesus has the power. The power to forgive and the power to cleanse all he will. Christ Jesus has the power even to destroy your enemy. And this, uh, this sickness is an enemy. While you are singing like that, power will come down. So if you don't know how to pray, don't you know how to sing? Uh, and then standing on the promises, you go from number 19, you go to what, 243, and then Christ Jesus will stand on this promise that cannot fail. And you sing that and sing that and sing that. And then after that, you, if something nothing has happened yet, then you open another one, and then you begin to sing. Before you sing two, three uh, hymns there, that person will get up. Uh, look at look at this, look at this. I'm reading now from verse 26. It says suddenly, suddenly, somebody shout suddenly. suddenly. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison, they were shaking. And immediately, so everybody says immediately. Yeah. And immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loose. Thank God we had the answer. We have the solution. And then we have the breakthrough from tonight. Sickness will not cheat any members of our families in Jesus' name. I will not cheat our friends anymore in Jesus' name. We are going to have the victory. I'm going to have the victory. I said I'm going to have the victory. Now look at this, look at this. Uh, we're looking at, uh, we're looking at uh, uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 19. Uh, and I'm reading from verse 11. Acts of the Apostles chapter 19 verse 11. And God, and God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the sick and kashifs or aprons. And the disease departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Did you hear that? Yes. The anchor sheep and the apron that had touched the body of Paul, the apostle. You see how that happened? That thing went away. Mary and Martha. Let me come to Mary and Martha again. Mary, did you hear that story about that woman that had issue of blood? And then she didn't bother to say, let Jesus lay hands on me. Let this happen. Let them cut this. Let them cut that. Let Jesus uh, cast out anything. He said, if I may but touch, somebody tell me there. The hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And she touched and she was made whole. Mary, Martha, the person you said, you could have said, speak a word. Let us also be healed. Or Jesus, just send us an anchor and as he touches this Lazarus, that evil spirit will vanish away. I'm just saying that they had a lot of solutions around them that they could have employed. And they did employ them. But thank God, I know better. I said I know better. Look at John now. We're coming to point number three. We're coming to point number three. John chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 7. John chapter 11. We're reading from verse 7. It says, Then, after that, after that he said to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. And his disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and they goest thou thither again. You see, they were afraid, even these disciples. The Jews were going to stone you recently, and are we, are we going to that place again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man, any man, who is that any man? 
I said to any man, if any man walk in the day, he stumbles not. I will not stumble. Because he said the light of the world, of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. Then it says, then these things says he. And after that he said, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. And I, and I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Look at that. Jesus said, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. And I go that I may do what? Wake him out of sleep. What's Jesus saying? What does that mean? He knew Lazarus was dead. What he's saying is this, look up. As it is easy for you to wake up your friend when he's asleep, either you touch him, lay hands on him, and he wakes up, or you just stand at the door and then you shout his name and that name you shout will wake up the one that is dead, that is sleeping. Or it is that you just knock at the door hard and you knock at the door, the person that is sleeping will wake up. He said, as easy as it is for you to wake up your friend that is asleep, so easy is it for Christ to wake up those who are dead. That's why when you go to the grave of Lazarus, it each, you know, kind of see how to touch, how to bend and how to do whatever, how to shout he just said, Lazarus come forth, that's how you wake up your friend who is asleep, that's how you wake up somebody who is asleep, he said our friend Lazarus is asleep let us go and wake him up, he'll wake you up tonight then his disciples and the supper of the Lord said, they said, Lord, if, he's, if he sleepeth, he shall do well. How be Jesus spake of his death, uh, but they thought he was speaking of uh, taking rest to sleep. And then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes. It's not that I'm glad yeah, Lazarus died. No, I'm glad that I told you. So when we get there, you understand that's the word of knowledge. You understand? That's the gift of the Spirit. We're not there. But I'm telling you from here that Lazarus is dead. And I give you the revelation before you see it in the physical. So I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the, to, uh, to the intent. Ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Let us go unto him. Well, the Lord was talking about the security of those who are following him. The flock of Christ. The followers of Christ. The fold of Christ. We're going to be fruitful. I said we're going to be fruitful. He said if you are walking in the light, there's nothing for you to fear. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. I said underneath you are the everlasting arms. Anywhere you go, you're going to be protected. Anywhere you go, you're going to be preserved. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25. It says, The shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy days, so shall thy strength be. As thy days, so, so shall thy strength be. There is none like the God of Jeshurun. Who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky, the eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath you are the everlasting arms. Underneath me, underneath me, are the everlasting arms. They will sustain you, they will support you. And as he carries you in his hand, in the everlasting arms, nothing will harm you in Jesus' name. Look at Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6, reading from verse 16. And he answered, there's a servant of uh, the prophet Elisha. And he answered, fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. As we go about doing the work of God, fear not. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And I see. And he saw. And I see. And he saw. 
and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha didn't you hear the Lord will protect you Second Chronicles chapter 32. Second Chronicles chapter 32. And I'm reading from verse 7. Second Chronicles chapter 32. We're looking at verse 7. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed. For the king of Assyria, for all the, all the multitude that is with him, for there be more with us than with him. There be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God, and to help us and to fight our battles. He will fight your battle for you in Jesus' name. Psalm 91, I'm reading from verse 7. Psalm 91, we're reading from verse 7. It tells us in verse 7, Psalm 91, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. Psalm 121. 121. Psalm 121. 121. And we're reading from verse 3. Look at verse 3. It says in verse 3, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee shall not slumber. Look at verse 8. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The Lord has given us a work to do. And the Lord Jesus, let us go. Let us go. Let's go. Let's go. And then they said, they are going to stone us there. Because you see recently, they wanted to stone you. Are you going there again? We are walking in the light. And as, soon, as long as we are walking in the light, there is nothing to fear. I'm looking at somebody there. I said, there is nothing to fear. In your family, there is nothing to fear. Because he that is with you is greater than he that is there in the world. We're looking at Acts chapter 18 verse 9. Acts chapter 18 verse 9. Then speak the Lord to Paul in the night in a vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. We're busy, we'll follow up now. We're following up the converts of the crusades. And as you go about, be not afraid, speak out, hold not your peace. Look at verse 10, for I am with thee. Somebody there, I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. I have much people in this city. And because he has much people in this city, and you are part of the people that will win them and keep them, and they will continue with the Lord, it says, go and be not afraid of anything. First John chapter 4, we're looking at verse 4. First John chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 4. In First John chapter 4, verse 4, here is the word of the Lord for you. It says, ye of God, little children. Anybody of God, Ray? born again there, redeemed there, a child of God, the year of God, little children, and have overcome them. And have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What's the Lord telling us? As long as we are in the path of duty. As long as we are doing the divinely appointed work that he has appointed for us, we are safe and we are secure. Underneath us are the everlasting arms. Before us is the Almighty. Behind us is the omnipotent power. Above us is the supernatural shield and cover. Around us are the hosts of heavenly chariots and angels. 
inside us, within us, is the greater one, the mighty one, the victorious conqueror. And because the greater one is living within us, and then the greater one is before us, behind us, and around us, and underneath us are the everlasting arms, thank God nothing will hurt you. I said nothing will hurt you. That's why now the Lord has said, go ye to all the world. Look at this, Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28. And I'm reading from verse 18. It says, and Jesus came and spake unto them. Who is he talking to tonight? He's talking to you saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, teaching them to observe, how many things? All things, whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, and lo, is a Savior, he'll be with you. Is a healer, he'll be with you. Is the deliverer, he'll be with you. Is the conqueror, he'll be with you. It says, and lo, I am with you always until when? Until the end of the world. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading here from verse 20. And they went forth. Anybody going forth? And they went forth. I said, anybody going forth? You have dynamite inside you. You cannot just stay like that. And you have the dynamo. You have the power, the dynamis, the spirit of God inside you. You cannot just stay there. And then you have the protection around you. And you have the word of faith and the word of power in your mouth. And the converts are waiting for you. And the people who have been brought to the Lord, you have their cards on you. And you are appointed to go and reach out to them. Here is the time you are going to see victory. You are going to conquer. You are going to see sick people getting healed under your hand. You are going to see weak people. They are going to become strong as you go forth to them in Jesus' name. And they went forth and they went forth and they went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. With signs following. Will the signs follow you? Will the power follow you? Will this authority follow you? Will the name of Jesus follow you? Why don't you rise up then and tell the Lord, I've got your word. I have the solution. Instead of just saying, I'm waiting for Jesus to come to Bethany. I'm waiting for Jesus. And then when he comes, Lazarus, your friend is sick. Hey, the word is in your mouth. Declare that word and let all those demons, let them be cast away. And let all the sicknesses, let them be, let the power of God come into your life tonight and say, I'm going forth. I'm going forth. Let us go. Let us go. Let us go. We're joining hands together and we're joining our voices together and he says, let us go. There's nobody that is slacking back. There's nobody that is dragging his feet. Let us go. Let us go. There's nobody that is afraid there. Let us go. We're going to the converts. We're going to the people that just came. We're visiting them. We're touching their lives. We're giving literature to them. We're praying for them. We're casting out devils. We're healing the sick. Let us go. Let us go. Let us go. And they went forth in the power of the Lord. They went forth in their anointing they went forth in the authority of the name of jesus they went forth and as we're going for these signs shall follow them that believe you're going forth you're going for these signs shall follow them that believe you're a preacher you're a soul winner and you're an evangelist and you're reaching out to the people and you're going out with fire you're going out with authority you're going out with the name of jesus on your leaves let us go let us go the converts are waiting for us let us go those who just came to know the Lord are waiting for us. Let us go. And the people that you know, were promised them, we've got your card, we're coming to visit you, we're sending text messages to them, we're sending messages to them on their WhatsApp, on their phone, on everywhere, and we're saying, everybody, rise up, brother, rise up, sister, rise up. Let us go. Let us go. Let us go. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And when you go there, you teach them. 
When you go there, you develop them. When you go there, you give them the word. When you get there, you pray for them. Any weakness there will turn to strength. Any discouragement there will turn to courage. Any kind of evil, false evil power there, you stand in authority. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And you are telling them, you go in the confidence of the Lord. You go with the faith of the Lord. You go in the power of the Spirit of God. And this work will prosper in your hand. Bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in. And they speak that word of authority. If any two of you shall agree together as touching anything, it shall be done. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do. Go forth and bring forth fruit. Go forth and bring forth fruit. Go forth and bring forth fruit. Go in the power of the Lord. Go in the assurance that you have. You cannot fail because the promises cannot fail. You cannot fail because the Christ who lives in you cannot fail. You cannot fail because the power of the Holy Ghost and the fire of the Holy Ghost you have got, that thing cannot fail. Go out. Go out. Go out and go forth and speak to them the word of life. Go forth and speak unto them the word of power. Go forth and speak unto them the word that will transform their lives. You can pray. You can mention the name of Jesus. You can have positive confession. And when you have done everything you know how to do, you can sing. You can sing. You can sing. Christ Jesus has the power. The power to save. The power to heal. The power to deliver. The power to destroy your enemy. The power to destroy the devil. Christ Jesus has the power. While you are praying, while you are mentioning the name of Jesus, and while you are singing like that, miracle will happen the doors will be open all those prison doors will be shaking and everything the father has not planted in your life in your family and then in the lives of the people around you everything will be uprooted your victory ground your victory ground your victory ground go forth in that victory Go forth in that power. Go forth in that prevailing, prevailing power. He shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. Rise up and go forth. Rise up and go forth. And they went forth, and they went forth, and they went forth, and they went everywhere preaching the word. And great, great, great was the manifestation of the power of God upon their lives. Remember, everything that happens to you will turn to the glory of God. Sickness, it will turn to the glory of God. Oppression, it will turn to the glory of God. Joblessness, it will turn to the glory of God. There's no wife yet, it will turn to the glory of God. There's no husband yet, it will turn to the glory of God. Whatever it is, whatever it is, that is called a mountain in your life, that mountain will move away. Everything will turn to the glory of God. Go forth in the strength of the Lord. Go forth in the strength of the Lord and go and prevail. And go and prevail. And go and have the authority, the authority that turns everything around and your life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name we pray. Every sickness will vanish away. Every mountain will move away. And all that discouragement in your heart, all that is going away tonight. The fire of God is coming in your soul. The power of the Holy Ghost is going to come in your soul. And this power, this power, this power, and the fire power will continue to move you. You go here, you open your mouth, a miracle will happen. You go to the other side and you are being follow up. All the problems that are there, go and solve their problems. I said go and solve their problems. Go and heal the sick. Go and cast out devils. And let your word with them be the word of power. And the confession of your mouth will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand there. And let's break every yoke. Let's destroy every work of the devil. Any sickness in your body. You went to the hospital. They said this report and this report. This is the time that sickness will vanish away. Thank God you will not die. I said, thank God you will not die. It's healing you now. It's delivering you now. It's empowering you now. It's putting authority in your mouth right now. 
and the anointing that breaks the yoke is flowing into your life right now father in jesus name you said whatever we ask in the name of jesus you will give i'm asking for every brother every sister every boy every girl every young person every old person whatever sickness is there you sickness i command you come out in jesus name any power of darkness oppressing anyone tormenting every anyone you said well cast out devils every kind of devil every kind of evil spirit evil power every every yoke and every cause i break everything those spirits come out in jesus name lord i pray their weakness will turn to strength discouragement will turn to courage and all the oppression you bring them out of that oppression and you give them the victory in jesus name you have said underneath us are the everlasting arms anyone that is feeling insecure there are enemies around you they're doing this and they're doing that all those enemies i cancel their power from your life in jesus name the lord is with you now underneath your power in front of your power behind your power around your power inside you power and i pray that power will remove every mountain out of your life in jesus name receive your victory receive your deliverance receive your healing receive your dominion and the courage and the power to go forth and do the work of god receive in jesus name Keep up those sons, keep up those sons. Lord, anoint all these sons. By the power of the Holy Ghost, anoint all these sons. That when they lay the sons on the sick, no matter the sickness, that sickness will be healed in Jesus' name. Anoint their tongue. Anoint their mouth. That as they speak the word of God, I pray, power will come through their mouth. Anointing will come through their mouth. And Lord, I pray like a mighty army, all your people were going forth and nothing can stand before this army. And I pray, Lord, all those who have been defeated before, get up, you are more than a conqueror from today. Let your power, let your strength, let your grace, let your anointing, and let everything good follow after your people in Jesus' name. Supply all the needs and all the lacks in their lives. As you go, you'll find God as your sufficiency. Everything will fall into place. Everything will be all right. No more tears. No more crying. No more sorrow. Go and enjoy your victory. Confirm each and every life, Lord. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.